Hello again, YouTube. It's the Magnus bringing you another Total War Warhammer online ladder battle. Uh, this time we'll be playing as the Dwarfs against the Warriors of Chaos. And you'll see I go with five Longbeards, two Hammers, three Quarlers, one Grudge Thrower, two Dwarf Warriors, we've got two Runesmiths, and we've got Ungram Iron Fist, the Slayer King. Now, everybody uses a box with the dwarves, so I was like, I'm not gonna box. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do most of a box. And the reason why I did this is I, I wanted to try something out, and uh, it seems to work quite well. And that is the mass of the dwarf seems a little, a little less than what it should be. Uh, so what I did here is I've got my two hammers up front, and I overlap them with the two dwarf warriors and then a long beard. So you can see how they're they're overlapping the way I laid them out. And I'm doing this to create more mass. And we're gonna see if this stops you know what usually happens to you as the dwarfs, which is people just going right through your lines like your Swiss cheese. So it's an idea. Um, the other thing that's really important here is the two runesmiths. Runesmiths are incredibly, incredibly important to a dwarf army. And you'll notice I have one on each side to get as much coverage uh, as possible. Uh, so my artillery is going to start firing. Let's take a look at during while that's going on. Let's take a look at my opponent's army. He brings upgraded Chaos Marauders. Now Chaos Marauders are generally pretty terrible, but maybe the upgrade's going to change things around for him. He also has four Chaos Warriors with great weapons. On top of that, he brings. One, two, Forsaken. Colex Sun Eater is in charge. And he's also got a Chaos Sorcerer of Fire, which uh, I don't know about bringing magic against the dwarves, but if he's going to use it to buff or debuff, then, then obviously that's a good thing. The uh, Colex Sun Eater is an interesting choice as well. I really like playing with him, but against the dwarves, we're going to have artillery and a lot of. Uh, well, you expect a lot of artillery and possibly missiles as well. He's going to be kind of vulnerable generally, but here I don't have a whole lot of that. Now, he did have some more hounds uh, hidden, uh, so I, d I didn't see that. But when I did see them moving, you'll notice I started to fold back uh, here. And, of course, as expected, he's going to shoot the gap. And I'm going to try to close it. But dwarfs are terribly slow. Well, you know, they kind of kind of got in there, but not good enough. But nothing to panic about. These guys are, are pretty weak. They don't do a lot of damage. Ungram's going to come over. He's going to smack a couple of them around. Oh, <laughs> that was that big ass of his. And pretty quickly, they're going to waver, and they're going to go right back where they came from. So here we go. The lines are about to clash. The dwarfs are getting into position. They're all fired up. Up here on the front line, notice they don't they don't move an inch when they're all bunched up like this. Like a steel wall, like a steel curtain. Because I'm a Steelers fan, so yeah, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> of course, that's not going to matter for Kolek. He's going to come right on in and start doing his thing, which is hammering on some hammers. <laughs> and on my, uh, oh god, man, what a bloody mess. It's making out of my guys here. So the Corlers are having a little bit of a hard time with Kolek, to be expected. He's holding back his better infantry. Uh, smart play, letting the um, letting his uh, his weaker units soften up my guys. Forsaken, he's going to pull a flanking maneuver. And you're going to notice, um, unlike most of my other vi videos, I'm playing very reactively here, right? And you really don't have a choice as the dwarves. And that's why I don't play them a lot, because I'm more of a aggressive assertive player than I am uh, a reactionary defensive type of player. So now he's bringing in the main line of infantry. Lots of great weapons. Smart choice against the dwarves. You need a can opener to open those cans. You're going to notice uh, the couple of units I brought back of Longbeards. Chase Kolek out. Couldn't be happier. Still have a couple all of my quarrelers, all three of them. Not too badly damaged. Fighting all along the lines. Things are looking good. Keep using my runesmith's abilities every chance I get. And I'm holding Moth pretty well. 
Now he's using his uh, fire wizard, looks like, the buff here. Or it looks like he was thinking about it anyways. Uh, he holds one chosen with great weapons in reserve. I think he holds them in reserve a little too long because, <laughs> as you notice, I get some shots off on them. And that's, you know, for expensive a unit, as expensive a unit as that is, you want them to sit there and take those shots. You notice I have the Quarrelers died in, dialed in on Kolek uh, because he is, without a doubt, the biggest threat uh, on the field. Ask my runesmith and he'll tell you. Yeah, Kolek's kind of a big deal. He is the Sun Eater. He's just pound way up there. There's there's the buffs. Okay, what are they using here? Flaming Sword of Ruin and the Cascading Fire Club. So really buffing up that front line. The hammers, though, look at them, hanging out to the very last. And here on my left, I repel his forces. So you're going to notice I start swinging down the line. I'm going to try to roll him up. Roll up the line. Now on the right, you're going to see I had... <laughs> I had the complete opposite result. I got broken, so he's going to start pouring into my back lines and start coming into my uh, the back of my infantry and into my squishy stuff. Now, Colex in trouble here, and that's going to help me quite a bit. Also, I'm, I'm not panicking. I'm just pulling these guys back while my infantry comes back, and I'm trying to get. I was trying to get Colex dead. I wanted him off the field, gone, uh, because getting rid of him is really going to break their leadership, and that's something very important. So you'll notice uh, I'm kind of keeping my guys together here. I'm trying to avoid getting spread out. This one uh, poor runesmith kind of got abandoned out there. Uh, he's trying to make his way back, but the Forsaken aren't having it. Uh, and I've got this unit of Longbeards out here, but they're also going to come back. And I'm just trying to keep uh, some sense of mass here. And I'm also trying to use the fact that I have more units, which you can tell uh, from the uh, balance bar up top. I'm trying to use that to my advantage to scare and uh, intimidate his army off the field. So the Forsaken still pounding on my runesmith. Surprised he hung in there that long. And the great weapons are coming in. You'll notice Ungram's in perfect shape. Like he's, he's barely got touched. He is definitely one of the best <laughs> melee combat lords in the game. So now I'm just kind of using a blob tactic. Like I said, I'm just going to try to surround his guys and beat them into submission. Uh, so I, I'd be, I'll be interested to see, you know, how am I going to do with this, this little blobbing thing? Because usually with the dwarfs, people keep a very rigid line, right? So now I'm going to use the hill to my advantage. His guys are tired, which we can see. Most of them are relatively tired. My guys are very tired. But I'm going to keep making them come up the hill. I actually should be drawing the other way. Uh, but they're going to come up the hill, let them get a little more tired. My guys are tired enough. Uh, see, he's charging with his Chaos Sorcerer. Can't blame him. He's probably out of Winds of Magic at this point. Or at least I hope so. And he's going to come in here and try to fight. But he's going to find himself very much alone because Chaos is routing for the day. The Dwarfs have won. Now, like I said, I am not the foremost expert on Dwarfs. Uh, but... I have some friends, and uh, I've been paying attention to what they do. And I think this overlapping infantry thing might have something to it. I'm curious what you guys think. Is it just he didn't push strong enough, or does the overlap really help? Now, I've tried it a couple of times, and it seems to always help. Uh, you'll notice the hammer's got a ton of kills. The corollers were serviceable. The thing I really like about them is they can actually do some damage and hang out for a while in melee, which is incredibly important as the dwarfs, because let's be honest, how often do your lines hold? Uh, Grudge Thrower did its job. Longbeards did as well. Dwarf Warriors were a little better than expected. Runesmiths both survived, and Ungram is like, wait, uh, can we do this again? I didn't get enough action. Uh, on his side, the great weapons, predictably, were the only thing that really got kills. These guys eh, maybe softened me up a little bit, but not really good value, I don't think. Kolek was the big threat. Uh, he did a good job keeping his Chaos Sorcerer away, away from me, knowing I didn't have, of course, you don't have Cav or anything quick uh, with the Dwarfs, unless you bring Gyrocopters. Uh, so he did a good job of keeping that out of the way. So a good game to my opponent. Uh, it was fun to play the Dwarfs for a change. Uh, now I've played every faction in one of my videos, so I feel like I'm free to, 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 to spread the love around again. 
Um, if you have any thoughts, questions, whatever, on this dwarf build or suggestions, of course, please leave them in the comments. Love to hear from you. If you enjoyed the video, you enjoyed the battle, you want to see more, please like, please subscribe. Uh, until the next time, this is the Magnus. See you then.